What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. You know the angels. Come on, help me, help me. Lord God, for how they stood in the gap, how they did what they were supposed to do, but 
and this country it all about. They fall in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless them, God. Oh, have your way in their lives, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, some come for one thing, some come for another this morning, but you know what we all need. You say you will supply all our needs for the your riches and glory. And we know you're going to do it, Lord God. Son of a foul, rather than tailor made word that is fit for someone's situation this morning. Oh, Lord God, have your way. Speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, the sick and the shut in, bless the health, Lord God. Strengthen them on every side. Do it because you're God. Do it because they're your people. Have your way in their lives, Lord God. Have your way. Bless right now, God. Do it for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Come on, let's receive our senior saints choir on today. Let's give them some love.
affirmation. Only you can tell the truth about that. It's not a testimony that somebody else can do on your behalf. That's something that you and you alone have to give recognition and honor to God. That down through the years, in spite of everything that has gone on, God has still been good to me. And the way you all are singing sounds like you know something about that. Praise his name. Next we'll have the welcome and greetings by our ministry leaders, and then we will have the recognition of our military veterans and senior saints.
They're going to line up across the front here. And then after that, we're going to ask our crew to come down because we have a special presentation to them that Sister Nia is then going to hand to our pastor and then he's going to present it to them. But before they receive that presentation, we're going to ask that they state their name and their uh, branch of service and their rank. Amen? Our first military veteran, and we can have everyone stand this morning as we salute them. Our first is Sister Yvette Johnson. Amen? Just say to um, 
Pastor McKenzie, let me just back up to the pulpit. To all of you, we thank God for you. Amen. We thank you, Pastor McKenzie, for this opportunity to our pulpit, all of our ministers. Uh, thank you so much for your support. And we just thank everyone for, again, being here today. So now as we switch gears, our seasoned saints and our uh, retirees, as we call ourselves. See, we must choose, as 1 Peter 1 and 15 says, to act as those who are God's own people, rejecting evil desires that drove our actions before we knew better. Our choices matter, and our God placed a high value in the lives, paying for them with his blood of Christ. God has us to get to this point. He's, had, he's got us to a point where we were to lay down our burdens. Whatever the problem was, God had us to lay down our burdens. So this morning, we're going to ask uh, Brother Caden. He's going to come and actually um, did have done it before they took a seat. But he's going to do this morning the veterans prayer, which is also our saints prayer. Amen. So as he does that, we're going to just um, ask you to just give him your attention. Amen. Amen. A prayer for veterans proud of our nation. They answer our call, defining the freedom and safety of all, on the land or, or on sea, or in jets high above. They went out of duty and honor and love, but however they served the Lord. Wherever they went, please bless them and help them to know that it meant what it meant and help us to thank them on veterans day for we owe them far more than we ever could say in jesus name amen and to god be the lord amen. amen now all of our 80 Let's give, let's give those that are 55 to 79 a hand, amen? Now, all those that are 80 to 89, we had them all sit right over here. So if you are age 80 to 89, go ahead and stand up. 80 to 89. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Okay, so we need six. Okay, we need six bags. Seven bags, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bags, amen. Now let me share a little bit. And as I call your name, I want you to raise your hand. Amen. Now, Sister, um, Sister Lambert, we're going to have you sit for one minute. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> standing here. Brother Brazil, y'all, is 88 years old. Now, I talk to every one of these people, and they said it's okay to share their age. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Now, my beauty queen back there, Sister Irma Collier, now y'all know that she is 84 years old. Beautiful. Amen. Sister Alfreda, raise your hand. And it's the quiet Sister Alfreda Johnson and her beautiful white hat. Yep, she's 85 years old. Amen. <laughs> Sister Sanders, you're looking beautiful at age 82. Amen. Hold it well. <laughs> Brother Clean. Brother Clean, he, he about to jump. Brother Clean holding on to 89 and told him to let it go. He asked that he wear his overalls today. Hey, I told you, well, whatever you want to wear, you have earned it, sir. <laughs> Amen. Um, he also, okay, that's who. Okay, we have a guest back there. Amen. Um, we need one more bag. Amen. And you have more, we have more brown. We're good. Did you get your bag? She got her white. Okay. Sister Glenn, make sure she gets her bag. Amen. And Sister Owl Quinn, 83. Yeah. Oh. What? 82. Not yet. I'm sorry. 82. Amen. 82. Amen. Look at him. So, the beauty 
contest, and you and Sister Kyler, we don't know which one of them. <laughs> amen. But y'all, let's give them all a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. We do want to acknowledge, um, not here this morning though, but Sister Helen, um, well, Sister Helen Sanders, I'm sorry, Sister Edna Perkins. Um, oh, that was your Sister Perkins. Amen. I haven't seen her. Look at you. Amen. To God be the glory. 83. 83 years old. Amen. 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 We do acknowledge Sister Early Washington, of course. Uh, you know, she's generally here with us. Sister Washington, y'all, she's holding 88. Amen. And to God be the glory for her. We do want to acknowledge Sister Connors ba uh, Bailey and Sister Foreman as well. Um, Sister Geraldine Davis. I, yeah, where are you at? Now look at here. I want you to say the number. How old are you, Sister Davis? 81. 81. Sister Davis, amen. You will never know. Amen. And we thank God for Sister Cora Nathan. Uh, she's a little under the weather. You know, for the last uh, year, we just thank God for her. She's 84 and holding. Sister Mary Francis, she was going to be here, but she had to take care of her great grands. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so see, hey, that's all right. She is 82, and we thank God for her. We do acknowledge, of course, Sister Rents as well, uh, Sister Wendy Harrison, and Sister Rosa Bryant. Amen. Amen. Now. Let's move from the 89, and we're going to the 90. We're going to the 90. The 90 and above. I can tell I'm getting old, because I'm getting some of these numbers when we used to have them right there. The first lady I want to acknowledge, because she was standing right up, Sister Sadie Lambert, go ahead and stand up. Y'all give her her flowers while she can't live. Give her her flowers. Because if nothing else, we know she can sing. She can sing, pray on my child. Yeah. I got a whole more high. Yeah. I've been talked about the church before, but I need who? Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Lambert. I will never forget that song and that message as long as I live. Amen. Um, she, <laughs> no, don't no, separate. We're <laughs> Amen. We're gonna come. We're gonna come back. Amen. Sister Adele Scott. She just had a birthday, and she crossed over to the ninety. Amen. Amen. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna tell one title or one song because she gonna bless us this morning. So I'll say the other one. I've been running for Jesus for what? Long time. Amen. And her husband is right there with her, Brother Monroe. We thank God for him. We thank God for Deacon Kearney. Amen. He's 91. Amen. And he's holding as well. We don't have with us this morning, um, Brother and Sister Gaynor, they're always right here. But as we all know, um, they did move away. Um, thank God for that. Thank God for children taking care of their parents. Amen. So uh, they are with their daughter now in Lehigh, and we thank God for that because they're both 90. Amen. We do uh, want to say to Mother Elizabeth Jones, if you all remember, she's a little lady set in the, what is it, the fourth pew in the back. Monroe made sure she got here every Sunday. Amen. She's 95. Amen. And she's a little under the weather as well, so let's just keep her in prayer and thank God for her also. Amen. I do want to acknowledge uh, one who God called home this year. We had one. We only had one. And we thank God for that. Uh, last year, I remember she was so excited about this day to when we got to church that morning. She was already here. She made sure her daughter had her here. Sister Lambert, you can take a seat, baby. Take a seat. She made sure that her daughter had her here. And that was Sister Willie Williams. Amen. So we thank God for the spirit and the legacy that she left. And last, we are so proud this morning to present to you, Mount Nebo, our oldest member here at Mount Nebo. Amen? Y'all ready? Is it a surprise? Some? Our 
present to you the pastor, if you will come down, because you know she loves the pastor. Come on down. We're going to wrap it up. I present to you our oldest member here at Mount Nebo, none other than Sister Roxy Bradwell. Amen. 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 Bring her to the front. She's having a little problem walking this morning, but we're going to pray that off that knee. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for our oldest member. 95, but y'all let me tell you, she yet holding on. If you don't remember nothing else she says, I'm yet holding on. Amen. And we thank God for her this morning. And we're going to... chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. May the word of God find his rightful place today in each of our hearts. You may be seated. Next, we'll have the introduction of our speaker by Lady Carolyn Baker. We'll have a song of praise by this senior choir. Amen. Thoroughly enjoyed the services thus far. Yeah. You can feel the spirit of the 
Lord in this church this morning. Amen. Amen. To Pastor McKenzie and Lady McKenzie in her absence, pastors, ministers, and their spouses, to officers and members of New Mount, New, New I'm sorry, Mount Nebo <laughs> Missionary Baptist Church. And to all my brothers and sisters in Christ who have come to be a part of this great celebration, I stand now to introduce the messenger for the hour. He is the son of Sister Christabel Baker and the late Reverend William L. Baker. He's the seventh child of 12 children. He was born in Kingsley, Georgia. At a very early age, his family moved to Jacksonville, Florida. He's a high school graduate of Eugene J. Butler. He's, a reti he's retired from AT&T Communications after 30 Woo! years of service. <laughs> <laughs> he holds multiple degrees from Jacksonville Baptist Theological Seminary. He's married and is the father of Anthony, and his lovely wife, Jackie, Shamika, and her husband, Will. And he has three grandsons, Trey, Zachary, and Nicholas, and one small granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> the messenger was called by God to teach and preach his holy word. Amen. He loves the Lord and takes his calling very seriously. He has an humble spirit and always willing to help his fellow man. He's known throughout Columbia County as the community pastor. I would like to introduce to some and present to others my best friend, my mentor, my husband, and pastor, Reverend Alvin J. Baker a New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church of Lake City, Florida. Hear he him. Amen.
It's never late. But McLaren says God can be late. But he'll never be too late. <laughs> Lift your hands toward heaven and tell him thank you. For waking you up this morning. Tell him thank you. Starting you on your way. Now if he's been real good to you, say God I thank you. Giving me another chance. There's a story uh, in the Old Testament where Moses sent out 12 spies. Mm -hmm. right. One of those spies was born with the name Oshia. All right. Moses wouldn't send him out with that name. Uh -huh. He changed his name to Yahshua. Yes, sir. Yahshua in the English is Joshua. Yeah, right. That's right. He wouldn't send him out with Oshia, uh -huh. because that's a prayer. All right. He sent him out with Yahshua, because that's a promise. Uh -huh. uh -huh. right. yes, Yahshua in Hebrew is Jesus in the English. Uh -huh. yeah. And so I came today with a promise All right. All right. that if you call on his name, yeah. he will come and see about you. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. If you call on his name, he will come see about you. To this gracious and awesome pastor. Come on, this great pastor. I met him some years ago. I was lecturing in Leesburg for him. Dr. Michael Warren. Uh, right. yep. I had met his brother earlier, and he introduced me to this great man of God. And I am grateful today to be here with the Mount Nebo family. <laughs> Sister McKenzie, in her absence today, all the other wonderful ministers of the gospel. I thank God for all of you today. And if, if my strength wears out, I think we've got somebody that can carry us home. <laughs> <laughs> to the deacon's ministry today and deaconess ministry and all the other officers and members of the Mount Nebo family and to the visitors who have come today to celebrate this marvelous recognition service. I say thank God for all of you. I certainly want to thank God today for our sister, Sidora, who has come up to be in this worship today. She was with us in Lake City for a while and she returned back to South Florida. But I told her if she ever want to get back to the big city, <laughs> come on back to Lake City. Somebody ought to say amen. I thank God today for my wife. She gets a little nervous in front of people. But I always tell them that all you have to do is remember they are saints of God in Christ. And um, I'm just so grateful that God has blessed her. She's been through uh, knee replacement surgery, back surgery. But I ain't put her down yet. <laughs> I didn't realize that as 
she was going through her surgery, and I was getting a little older. So I'm just as slow as she is. And it take both of us to get around. Pastor asked me earlier, how was the trip down? I said, well, for too old folk, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but it's good to be here. With Sister Pittman today, to her precious husband, thank God for your kindness. She has been an angel for me. Anytime she see me walking around a state conference or state convention, uh, as though I'm fluttering like a chicken with his head cut off, <laughs> she comes to see about me. Right. So we're, we're just glad to be here. Listen, <clears throat> Mount Nebo literally is the last mountain that Moses had a chance to carry. <laughs> We have a lovely AME church in Lake City, <clears throat> Mount Pisgah. But pastor from my little small study in Mount Pisgah is just a lofty cliff. That's right. right. That's right. On Mount Nebo. On Mount Nebo. <laughs> and it was there that Moses peeked over. Yes, and saw the promised land. Yes, but this pastor has not only allowed you to see the promised land, but he's helping you to get there. <laughs> I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm learning from every experience that we go through. Uh, <clears throat> prior to the pandemic, we were having wonderful church service for about two hours, 15 minutes. Two hours, 20 minutes. And so because we were at two hours, 15, 20 minutes, I was comfortable preaching for about 45 minutes. Now our church goes from 10 to about 11, 15. And the best way to cut out the length of service was to show them the message. <laughs> The reason they showed the message is because the singing yeah. was better than the preaching. <laughs> and can we put our hands together not only for our choir today, can we? <laughs> but also, I want you to help me celebrate our seniors today. <laughs> which I'm in that crowd, celebrate again. <laughs> and we certainly want to celebrate today our armed forces veterans. Yeah. My father said years ago, <clears throat> he and my youngest brother were military men. My father said years ago that this stuck with him and I've seen it since then as a young man. It said all gave some and some gave up. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so, if you're here today and you were not in the military service of our country, if you're born again, you've certainly been in the service of our God. Yes, sir. Yeah. You got two scriptures, and I thought I would juxtaposition between the two. In Psalm 139, you have a scripture that talks about us being fearfully and wonderfully made. That's because God doesn't create mistakes. But then you have another scripture that speaks of the public ministry of Jesus. As Pastor read earlier, he has gone out through towns and villages. And he comes into a group of people that are in bad shape. That's right. That's right. That's right. I would say he had compassion on That's them. Mm -hmm. Sprouts near the mind. He has compassion on them. Yeah. I don't know if this man was in that crowd. But I know the man in this text needed Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. In Luke chapter 8, mm -hmm. beginning at verse 26, my 
my Bible says, and they arrived at the country of the Galilee, uh -huh. which is over against Galilee. Yes, sir. And when he went forth to land, mm -hmm. there met him out of the city a certain man, right. which had demons a long time and wore no clothes. Neither abode in any house, but in tomb. Yes, sir. When he saw Jesus, mm -hmm. cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Yes. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Oftentimes it had caught him, seized him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bonds and was driven off the devil into the wilderness. Yes, Listen to that. He was driven of the devil mm -hmm. into the wilderness. Verse 30, and Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many demons were entered into him. Last verse I want to read while hearing is verse 39, where Jesus speaks for the second time in this text and says, Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to preach with just a few moments around the subject. Jesus defies the odds. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus defies the odds. In sports gambling or betting, and other unusual circumstances and situations, one's chances of winning is determined by the level of the odds. According to the laws of mathematics and the rules of the game, the greater the odds, the lesser the chance of one winning or succeeding. That's right. That's right. The word odd is strange because it, 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 it means to differ or to have a difference in favor of one side over the other. Mm -hmm. It means to have a tremendous advantage. That's right. That's right. You have and I have had some things that have had the advantage over us. Yes, sir. I think I'll say that one more time. Yes, yeah. 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 I heard already this morning that the devil tried to keep the oldest member of this church yeah. from coming this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But she knows somebody yeah. 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 who defied yeah. the arm. Yeah. When I think about people, individuals, who have had the deck stacked against them uh -huh. in a system that sometimes seems to be unfair. Sometimes it's family and friends. It's not always just your enemies who will line up against you. But there are times in your life, if you look back, when you have found yourself outnumbered, outgunned, and the underdog, and the odds were against you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But some of us here today are living proof <clears throat> that help came from somewhere and you defied the odds. And oh, when you look back over your life, you ought to shout for just being here today. Because when you think about where you used to be, when you think about where you could still be, 
And you know that somebody came to your rescue. Somebody made a way. All of our yesterday wouldn't be a today if God hadn't made a way. When I think about life, I think about this horrible, horrible, horrible challenge that we have because of the influence of Satan. And Satan will not attack you, watch this, when you're strong. Satan will come at you where you're weak. And so since all of us in here are saved and sanctified, I'm going to just go back in my path and I'll leave it up to you. But I remember a time when I thought Jack Daniel was a better friend than Jesus. Help me somebody. Because Satan will make you think that some things are better for you when they're really bad for you. And I had the odds stacked against me and I didn't know it. Because I thought that as long as I had Jack Daniel, I could drown my troubles away. But I discovered when I woke up early that next morning, I still had my trouble and a hole that I had to deal with along the way. In Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in 1960, the late Dr. Gardner Calvin Taylor said during one of his lectures, he says, ministers today must face a world fraught with difficulty. Yes, sir. We must minister unto a congregation which is faced with odds so huge they seem insuperable. Mount Nebo, here we are 62 years later. A new generation, new generation of ministers, but we are being summoned to duty to shepherd congregations populated with people who have the same problems as yesterday. Odds so huge. Yes, sir. They seem insuperable. Yes, sir. So I want to just share for just a few moments my thoughts on this subject, and I will not preach the pericope with points. All right. Because there's only one point in this message. Yes, sir. And that point is Jesus mm-hmm. defies the yard. Yes, sir. All right. The text says, um, a certain man, a certain man. as soon as Jesus, watch this, got off the boat in Gadarene. The story before this story, Jesus had calmed a raging sea. And that's why I know this text is going to shout somebody today because you've had some storms in your life. Can I get a witness in here? You've had some rocky boats in your life. But as you look back, you discover that the reason you made it to safer shore yeah. is because you turned the ship over to a captain yeah. that cannot be drowned. A captain that cannot be swept away yeah. by the storm. Yes, this story is personal. Yeah. Pastor, this story is painful. Yeah. This story is pitiful. Yeah. When you look at what happened to this man, That's right. This is a sad story. Yeah. This story, this story is painful, uh-huh. it's personal, yeah. and it's pitiful. Yeah. When you look at what happened to this man, yeah. but this story got a shock to it. Yeah. When you look at not what happened to the man, yeah. but what happened for the man. Yeah. Don't, help me yeah. Don't let nobody put you down because what happened to you. Yeah. You ought to still shout because what happened for you. Yeah. So if God ever gets to you, he has something for you to make your enemies leave you alone. Tell somebody, I've had some good things in my life. I've had some bad days. I've had some hills to climb. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my Me. 
So my shout is always, I don't care what Jack Daniel did to me. I'm always thinking about what Jesus did to me. Look at this text before my time run out. Well, watch the text because um, you need to be careful quoting scripture. Yeah. 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 There are some strings. Scriptures, you ought to be careful quoting. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mr. Yeah. Um, I hear folks saying, "Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world." The man in this text can quote that scripture. That's right. Right. Yeah. Because he's full. He's full. Yeah. Yeah. Of these. Yeah. But yeah. the story don't end there. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because, because he he knows that what's in him controls him. Yeah. But somehow he knows uh -huh. he who is in front of him yeah. can fix him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so don't quote greater is he that's in me yeah. if you don't have him in you. We're dealing with one aspect of this service today, with saints. Yes, sir. And um, when I go back home, um, I'm gonna fix my choir. <laughs> they won't let me sing. But everybody in this choir is my age and above. Yeah. I qualify for this choir. <laughs> Here's why we qualify. Uh, they are seasoned saints. The word there is hagios. It can be a noun, an adjective, or a verb. As a noun, they are a saint. As an adjective, they are holy. As a verb, they are being sanctified. You can't be sanctified yeah. unless you've been just tough. Yeah. So, me and my man's choir you got it going on. <laughs> because greater is he that's in us yeah. than he that is in the, the world. The, the, this man, the, the, this man um, is in a strange situation. J.I. Packer told Anko that demons' minds were permanently set to oppose God That's right. and goodness mm -hmm. and faith, yeah. the kingdom of Christ, and the welfare of humanity. Yes, sir. In other words, demons were corrupt and hostile toward God yeah. and toward man. Yes, this psychosomatic illness is not from dementia nor Alzheimer's. Oh, no. But Satan himself has dispatched the host of his homeboys yeah. to disrupt this man's life. Yeah. And my friends, when demons, satanic enemies, yeah. come upon you, uh -huh. trust me, yeah. the odds are against you. Yeah. The text never tells us, watch this, the life that this man had before the odds were stacked against him. That's right. That's right. But it gets better at the end. Yeah. Did, did, did he have a wife? I don't know. Yeah. Did he have children? I do not know. Did he have a job? I don't know. The only associate spoken of this is another 
Yeah. Demonic possessed men and recorded in Matthew's yeah. account of his gospel. That's right. And my brothers and sisters, one of the things that Satan would do to all of us is he will attack us, yeah. right? No, and right. then to control us, he will isolate us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. He will attack us yeah. and then isolate us. Yeah. Because when you're isolated, right. you don't have nobody right. to pray for you. Yeah. When you're isolated, yeah. you don't have nobody yeah. to comfort you. Yeah. When you're isolated, yeah. you don't have nobody to care for you. Yeah. Satan will isolate you. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you'll find yourself in a wilderness situation. Yeah. Come here, somebody. Yeah, um, um, don't ever tell anybody mm -hmm. that you can bind Satan. That's right. That's right. I've heard folks say, Satan, I bind you. <laughs> the man in this text got a problem. That's right. Because he, 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 he cannot say that if he only has one band to buy. Yeah. And in the text, we have to, we have to find ourselves uh, looking not only at his problem, because I don't know what his life was like yeah. before. Right. But one thing I do know is this is his lucky day. Yeah. This man does not meet Jesus by accident. Right. This man meets Jesus by providence. Yeah. And because of providence, God showed up with mercy on his mind. Yeah. Now, the Bible says a certain man. Yeah. 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 That's right. The word certain there is teeth in the Greek. It can be somebody or anybody. Yeah. Which means you ought to put yourself in this text. Yeah. Because there were times in your life yeah. when you didn't have no friends to see about you. Yeah. You didn't have no money to take care of you. That's right. And you almost didn't have a roof over your head. Right. But somehow Jesus came. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Somehow Jesus came. Yeah. And can I tell you what my mama said? Boy, you are making it not on your prayers. Yeah. But I prayed for you. Yeah. Your daddy prayed for you. Yeah. Your sisters prayed for you. I wish I had somebody in here that know you didn't get this far. By yourself. A certain man in here, a certain woman in here, ought to testify that God came your way. Hey! Came your way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For he commanded the unclean spirit come out of the man. Come out. That's right. He commanded, commanded. That's right. the unclean spirit yes, come out of the man. Yeah. Jesus mm -hmm. commanded. Yes. That's right. Paran Gillow. Mm -hmm. Paran Gillow. Yes, sir is in what we call the indicative mood. All right. As a verb. That's right. So, so, so. It means that the speaker mm -hmm. speaks yeah. as though what he spoke That's right. has already happened. So um what, what, whatever you do, don't 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 let me confuse me today, whatever you do. Because <laughs> Sometimes I confuse me. <laughs> but if, if I can help me today, I, I, I understand why this has to be in the indicative mood. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Parangelo. Yeah, all right, all right. It's a command. It's a command. But it's a strange command. Yeah, yeah. Because of who it is. That's right. That this is the command. Yes, when Jesus says, come out, a captain, come out, yeah. you unclean spirit, come out. Yeah. He speaks it because he has exclusive authority. Yes, right. yes, yes. But it has to happen because he has dunamis power. In other words, in other words, I said it, yeah. and I mean it. Yeah. 
There ought to be some folk in here shouting right now. Because oh, it wasn't your prescription you got, Steve. Yeah. It was him saying, be healed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, it wasn't your resume. It was him telling somebody yeah. in human resources, give it a job. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get some help in here? Yeah. When Jesus speaks, yeah. it's already done. Yeah. In the beginning, God, God. Yeah. created yeah. the heavens yeah. and the earth. Yeah. And the Spirit of God yeah. hovered yeah. above the waters. Yeah. And then God said, yeah. help me somebody. Yeah. That's the Trinity in completeness. God, yeah. the author of our faith. Yeah. Watch this. And the Holy Spirit that moved according yeah. to God's command. Yeah. But the Word of God, when God speaks, that's Jesus. Yeah. So when Jesus speaks, yeah. the God yeah. who created something out of nothing, yeah. the God yeah. that hung the sun, moon, and the stars, yeah. the God yeah. that calms stormy waters, yeah. the God yeah. that calms breeze and fall, when God, when God speaks, I say when God speaks, I say when God speaks, something has to happen. I say something has to happen. I say something has to happen. He's isolated. But he's also seized. The Greek word means to snatch together. And it suggests that whenever this demon wanted to aggravate this man, yeah. He had full control. Yes, sir. Read this story again when you go home. He was kept under guard. That's right. He was bound in shackles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Driven into the wilderness. Yes, but there were times when this demonic possessed man yes, sir. gathered enough strength to break the bonds yeah. and shake loose the feathers. Yes, that's like having shackles on your feet, yeah. handcuffs on your hand. Yeah. But Satan gave him so much power, yeah, yes, he could break the handcuffs, yeah. shake loose the bone. Yeah. Because Satan would get you to do some crazy stuff. I'm coming back one day. Yeah. Um, but before I go, um, <laughs> I used to party. All right. And um, Mr. Pittman, I partied so hard. All right. Until the next day, somebody would say, Pete, you had a ball last night. And I would say to them, I did. Because because being inebriated yeah. will cause you to do some stuff yeah. that you won't normally do. Right. Help me somebody. Yeah. You can tell somebody that's got a little tipsy and don't know how to dance because they'll get on the floor in their house. Yeah. Come here, somebody. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that it goes forth and it will not return to me both. Yeah, yes, Even though things that have you twisted, yes, sir. torn, mm. troubled, yeah. teary, yeah, trapped, yeah. and on the verge of throwing in the towel, yes, I came today to tell somebody. To hold on, yes, Jesus yes, is just a step away yes, from your situation. Yes, I wish I had a witness. Yes, How do you hold on when the odds are stacked against you? Yes, well, you got to trust in the Lord yes, with all your heart. Yes, 
Leave not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Oh, I know you're holding on with hell. You got to wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. How do you wait? And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap. defies the odds. Yes, sir. This story yes, sir. has just to position between Jesus and the man right. and Jesus and some hogs. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't come today. Uh -huh. To talk about hogs. All right. I came today to talk about a man yeah. who was in a bad situation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Jesus, Jesus showed up. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. The first time Jesus speaks, and I'm almost done, he asked the man, What is your name? Yes, because the dialogue is a, is a contrast between the demons in him uh -huh. and the man himself. Yeah. What is your name? What is your name? He, his life has been so torn until he doesn't know his name. Because yeah, right. when he answers Jesus, he says, my name yeah, is Legion. Right. Somehow this man has seen a Roman band yeah. of soldiers. Yeah. And in the Roman army, a legion is 6,000 right. soldiers. Right. Help me somebody. Yeah. Somehow, he equates 6,000 soldiers right. with the war going on on the inside. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Satan is real. Yeah. But Jesus is real earth. Yeah. I don't know if that's the word or not. Excuse me. I don't know if that's the word. Um, um, Jesus is real earth. Can I get some help in here? Uh, when Jesus shows up, he says, what is your name? Yeah. He, he cannot tell him his name because his mind is all messed up. Yeah, right. But when Jesus excommunicates yes, with an exorcist reality, yeah. these demons, yeah. the man's life begins to change. Yeah. Oh, since I met Jesus, yeah. what a wonderful change yeah. has come over me. Yeah. Anybody in here want to talk? To Baker for just a moment. Tell me if you were rich or good. Tell me if you were on your way to hell. Tell me if you were lost and know you could be found. But tell somebody, oh, since I met Jesus, my walk got straighter. My talk got stronger. My praise got higher. My joy got lifted. My days changed. Somebody holler, oh, since I met Jesus. Jesus defies the arms. I'm done. Return to your own house and tell the great things God has done for you. Here's my shout. <laughs> Get my seat ready. Jesus sends the man home. Mm -hmm. Jesus is omniscient. He couldn't have sent the man home if he didn't know the man had a home. I would say that. See, when Jesus changed your life, don't go tell your neighbor. Yeah. Go home. Go home. <laughs> when Jesus changed your life, yeah. don't go back to the bar. Yeah. Go home. Yeah. When Jesus changed your life, yeah. don't go back to the club. Yeah. Go home. Yeah. Home yeah. is when you caused a lot of hell. Home yeah. is when you came home drunk.
your family. All the great things that has happened to you. If I can get some help in here, Jesus says to this man who had the odds stacked against him, go home. What great news it had to be for this painful, painful man to hear, go home. What powerful news for this powerless man to hear, go home. And as I finish the day, Jesus tells this man to go home and tells what great things God has done for him. But is there anybody in here who can remember when the odds were stacked against you? Yeah. No, don't wait till you get home. You ought to testify right now. Yeah. He picked me up, yeah. turned me around, yeah. placed my feet yeah. on solid ground, yeah. on Christ, yeah. solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Your strategy is to hold on to your faith. Yes, Claim close to the word until Jesus steps in yes, and calm your storms and fix your situation. Yes, when Jesus comes in, Jesus he rearranges the odds. Yeah. For my Bible declares, since God is for me, yeah. it does not matter right. who, it does not matter yeah. how many are against me. Yeah. Jesus shatters the odds. Yeah. Jesus turns the percentages around. Yeah. Jesus alters all predictions. Yeah. There ought to be somebody in this house yeah. before I told who were born to declare today that the odds were stacked against you. Yeah. You were exiled yeah. and trapped uh, and naked yeah. and guarded yeah. and chained yeah. and bound. Yeah. Yes, you were overpowered yes. and outnumbered, pain and pathos. You were a prisoner yes. yet bleeding with your back against the wall and no help in sight. Yes, sir. Uh, but one day, one day, Jesus stepped in. Yes, Jesus the defiant. I know he rectified, yes, but Jesus is the defiant. I know he glorified, but Jesus is the, def is the, is the defiant. And I know that if he ever takes hold of your situation, you can be our man, our number, or whatever, but when Jesus steps in, he turns things around. So, Mr. Pittman, where, where could you find the odds of feeding 5,000? With two fish, five body loads. What are the odds of healing a man who had a disease that no one could cure? What are the odds of whole somebody human walking on water? What are the odds of healing a man crippled for 38 years? What are the odds of turning water into wine at a wedding at Cana? What are the odds of fixing a woman's problem after 12 long years? What are the odds of a man going up the cabin? Stretch wide. And hung high. Yeah. What is the odds of a man dying for me yeah. when I was a wretch undone? Yeah. They bruised him yeah. in his head, right, right, right. put a cross yeah. on his shoulders, uh -huh. pinched him in his side, yes, but he stayed there yeah. and he died. Yeah. The world was against him. Yes, Jews were against him. Yes, his family were against him. Yes, Satan was against him. Yeah. Sin was against him. Yeah. Death was against him. Yeah. But Jesus. Defied the odds. He died. Then he died. He died. Then he died. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He walks with me. He talks to me. He tells me I am his own. Jesus defies the odds. Have you any rivers that see? He's able. I said he's able. He defies every yard. 
Yes, sir. I don't care what you're going through in this house. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever meet Jesus, yes, sir. Yes, sir. if he ever gets on the inside, yes, sir. you can cry out now like this man. Yes. Greater is he yes. that's in me yes. than he that's in the world. Yes. If he's done something for you, can you stand on your feet? Yes. If, if, if Jesus made a difference in your life, Come on, Mount Nebo, for the season since today. For our military today. Call it one more time. Somebody say, Jesus, my burden bearer. Jesus, my heaven old sheriff. Jesus, my rock in a weary land. Shout, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, he is. And praise God for well, this this service thus far. I want to do the worship and giving, and then we'll have the announcements. Follow the worship and giving. But ask our deacons to come. Amen. As we worship through giving on today. And could I get one extra plate and? and Deacon Jones and Brother Leroy will be standing for our public offering. If you need a tiny envelope, if you would please raise your hand and one of our ushers will assist you. Also, you can give electronically, you can give via Givelify, Zelle, or if you're going to pay by credit card or debit card, someone from our Financial Ministry will receive you in class number two on your right and my left. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Luke 6 and 38. Chris is standing today for our youth department for us on behalf of our state, our state convention. As we know, we give, uh, the church has already given its donation for our donation day for our school for a memorial. Amen. Come on, come on. We have, through contributions, to support our students as they go to school. Amen. Education is still much needed within our community. There are children who desire to go, but they are not able financially to go because just like everything else, the cost of education is rising. Books, tuition, room and board steadily increasing. And the youth department has been tasked along with the church to give a contribution and he's standing today. I want you to please put something in that middle basket as well. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You never know how much your small token makes a big ripple effect. I'm a country boy, so I used to skip rocks across the water. And you didn't have to have a large rock to cause a ripple. Amen, somebody. All you needed to do was just have a small pebble and if you throw it in the water just right, it will create ripples beyond what you could see. That's what your contribution will do today. Your contribution will create a ripple that may be beyond what your eyes can see, but it does make a difference. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And listen, I had a conversation yesterday, I won't say with whom, but we had a conversation, and I'm not out to offend anyone with this statement. But sometimes we put energy in the wrong places. Amen. Yes, I welcome and receive my brothers and sisters home who come home after being incarcerated. Yes, sir. And we celebrate that. We invest money, storm parties. But what about when a child goes off to school? 
See, I didn't get very many people that agreed with me on that. When children are trying to improve themselves and the odds, as Vickers just told us, are stacked against them all. When they leave home, the odds are stacked against them. And when they're striving to make improvements in their life, we ought to rally behind them. Amen. It doesn't take much when you got a congregation like this. It doesn't take much money from each of us to make a difference. Well, what will you give today to create that ripple effect in one person's life? I want you to give today. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for these gifts that we're about to receive. Thank you for the blessing of having something to give on today. Bless now, God, as only as you can. For you have already told us, according to Malachi, to bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in thine house, and prove me now. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you shall not have room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and for your favor. We give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we ask, and in Jesus' name we pray. And it is amen. If you will stand with me, I'm gonna ask the overflow to come first, and then come around from the rear. Amen, and bring your contribution on to Each and every one of you, and certainly we do invite you to come again and worship with us here at the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church. Amen to Pastor Baker and his wife. Thank you all for driving down to be with us on today. Amen. That's right. Get them to the back. And to Sister Pittman for organizing, along with those who assisted her and making this a beautiful service today. Amen. Amen. Wasn't well, everything nice? Amen. And we are certainly appreciative of our senior saints, as well as our veterans, as we have heard throughout this service. Been a great day. Amen. 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 Be even better if my dolphins win today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take your word, Dave. Amen. To God be the glory. For all that he has done, let us rise. For those who did not receive something, there is something in the back that they have prepared for you. So please, man, please, sir, go to the back as well. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that you have loaned us here together. We pray, oh God, that all that has been done and said has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Now, God, dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Be with us now, O oh God, as we go our separate ways until we have this opportunity to gather again as a community of like believers to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we ask all of this in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we shall trust. In Jesus' name we say, amen. God bless you.